Different servers are going to have very different use cases, but regardless of whether you're running a VPS or a bare metal server running on a Raspberry Pi under your bed, when you first start the server up, it is not going to be considered secure. There's going to be some very obvious flaws, like being able to log in as the root user through SSH, or being able to log in through SSH without an SSH key. And these are very easy things to fix, and should be done before you try to do anything else with the server. Now, obviously, there is going to be some extra stuff you want to do on top of this, but there is still this baseline that every single server should be at before you go and do any of that stuff. So that's going to be the focus of today's video. Now, my VPS is hosted with Linode, but that's not going to affect any of the other stuff we're doing. We just get this different dashboard. If you're using like DigitalOcean or anything else, everything we're going to be doing is exactly the same. Now, I'm also going to be running an Arch Linux server. Someone's probably going to say something in the comments about why you shouldn't run an Arch server. I like Arch. If you want to do this on Ubuntu or Debian or Alpine, it's going to be exactly the same. So this server is completely clean. It doesn't have a limited user account on it. All it has is the root user. So the first thing we need to do is actually SSH into the server. Now, I believe on Windows, it does have an open SSH client built into it now. So you should be able to do this from PowerShell as well. But if you're on Linux, Mac OS or BSD, then you're already going to have open SSH installed. If you don't, just go and install it with your package manager or on Mac OS, however you install stuff on Mac OS. So to actually SSH into the server, what we need to do is run the SSH command and then specify which user that we want to log in with. So in this case, we're going to log in with the root user and then we also need to specify the IP address of the server. Now, luckily on Linode, it gives us the exact command we need to run. But if you're on another VPS provider, it will list out the IP address of the server at some point on the dashboard. So let's go and actually run this command here. So go over to my terminal here, just run the command. And what it's going to do is prompt me whether I want to continue connecting because I've never connected to this server before. So we're going to just say yes. And then it's going to ask me for the password for the root user. So you would have set this up when you were actually setting up the VPS. So go and just put in that password that you made. And then you should be able to log directly into the server. Now there's plenty of other stuff you may want to do like setting up your locales and setting up your time and date. But we're just going to go over security today. So... The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure the server is actually up to date. And this will depend on whatever distro you're actually using. So if you're using Ubuntu, you're going to use apt. If you're using Fedora, the DNF on Fedora, just go and check what the command is to actually update the server. In the case of Arch Linux, what we're going to do is run pacman. We don't need to run a sudo because we're already the root user. Dash S Y U and give it a second to actually go and synchronize the package databases. And it should prompt me to actually go and download some updates now because I believe the ISO it uses is a little bit out of date. Just go and download this. And once that's all done, we'll go on to the next step. Now, one thing you may want to do is set up automatic updates. So if you're on CentOS, this would be done with Yumcron. If you're on Fedora, it will be done with DNF Automatic. And if you're on Debian or Ubuntu, it will be done with unattended upgrades. And if you're on Arch, you will have to go and, you know, fiddle around with doing Pac-Man scripts yourself. You could probably just make a cron job for it, have it automatically download and install the updates. But there is some reasons why you may not want to do that. So this blog post on the Fedora wiki goes over basically all the reasons why you should do it and all the reasons why you probably shouldn't. I will say that you probably shouldn't unless there is a reason why you always need the server to be up to date. Because that update could introduce a new bug, which may break a critical service, which leads to some extended downtime on the server. So if you want to update the server, I would recommend backing up the server, testing the update, and then rolling back if you need to, rather than automatically doing it every time a new update comes out. Now, this server has a serious problem. Even if we want to log in as a user that isn't the root user, we can't actually do so because it's the only user account. So we need to actually go and make another account. So the way we do this on Fedora, CentOS, or Arch is run the user add command and then specify the name of the user. So let's call the user Brody in this case. The user can be named whatever you want it to be named. And what we're going to do is go and set a password for that user as well. So pass wd and then whatever user you want to set the password for and let's go and set the password i'm going to set it as something very very secure so there we go now we have the user and we have a password set for it as well 
and you're also going to want to add this user to the wheel group otherwise you won't be able to run sudo with that user and it's going to be a limited user account that has no purpose for actually managing a server so the way we do that is with the user mod command dash a capital g the name of the group we want to add so in this case wheel and then the user that we want to add it to so in this case brody and this user has now been added to that group. Now, if you're on Debian or Ubuntu, it is going to be a little bit different. In that case, what you would do is run add user, the name of the user. So in this case, I'm going to call it Brody. And then add it to the pseudo group as well. So it has pseudo privileges. And when you run this command, it will prompt you to add a password for the user. We do have one other problem on CentOS and Arch, and that is that by default, the wheel group doesn't actually have pseudo privileges. So what we need to do is go and run Vi sudo. Now, when you try to run this on an Arch server, what you'll notice is you're actually missing Vi because Arch doesn't actually come with Vi anymore. So just go and install that with Pac-Man, but other distros, I believe, still do come with Vi. Anyway, if we go and run Vi sudo now, what we need to do is go and look for this line here where it says uncomment to allow members of group wheel to execute any command. So what we need to do is just go and uncomment this line here, go and save the file. And because we went and actually updated the server before, we might as well just go and reboot it now. So if we just go and run the reboot command, this is going to disconnect us from the server. But another way you can reboot the server is usually from the server dashboard. There'll be like a power off and a reboot button. So in the case of Linode, if we just go and click this here, Yes, I want to reboot the server and then give it a second. It's going to start up the server again and I'll cut back to when it's done. This time when we SSH into the server, we're not going to do it with the root user like we did before. This time what we're going to do is change this command to be the new user we just made. So in this case, it's going to be Brody, but in your case, it'll be whatever user you just made. So go and put your password in for that user and then you'll SSH into the server. Now, you're also going to want to make a user directory for that user as well. So let's just check where we are. We are in root. So what we're going to do is just make a new folder. So sudo make dir slash home slash the name of the user. So in this case, Brody, and go and put the password in for that user. And then we just need to make the new user the owner of that folder. So if we just do sudo to own and then the name of the user, so Brody in this case, and then the name of the folder, so slash home slash Brody. And now that user owns that folder. So let's go back to our regular terminal. And what we need to do is actually generate some SSH keys. Now with SSH keys, you don't necessarily have to generate new keys for every single service you're going to be using. But obviously having new keys is going to make it a little bit more secure. But if you already have some for say like GitHub or GitLab, you can go and reuse those. So if we want to generate some keys, what we need to do is run the SSH dash key gen command and then pass in the dash B option to specify the number of bits to use. Now I'm going to use 4096. The man page does say that 3072 will be sufficient, but more bits obviously is going to be better. Now, if you already have an SSH key that has the default name, pass in the dash F option, and this will let you specify a file name. Personally, I like to do this anyway, just because it allows me to actually name the files so I can very easily keep track of them. So I'm going to call it Brody's server. And if we go and press enter, that's going to prompt us for a passphrase. So if you use a passphrase, then you'll have to use this passphrase every single time that you want to use the SSH key. Doing that will make it more secure. So I'm going to actually set the passphrase. And there we go. The key has now been generated. So if we'll just go and run ls, as we're going to see, we actually have more than one file. We have the Brody server and Brody server.pub. So never ever share the contents of any of the files in here that don't have .pub on them because any of those files is going to be the private key. The public key is going to be anything with the extension .pub. This is the one that you share with other services. But SSH has a built-in way to share this file with a server. So if we run SSH dash copy dash ID, this is going to let us copy the public key to a server. So if we do dash I, and you don't actually have to specify .pub here. If you don't include .pub, then it's just going to assume that you mean the .pub file. So we're going to say Brody server, and then specify the server that we actually want to send this to. So I'll just grab my IP address again. So it's going to be this one. Uh, sorry, this one here. That was the other server. So Brody at, and then this IP address, and then it's going to try to send this over to the server. And it's going to prompt us for our password. So go and put your password in. And there we go. Now the SSH key has been sent to the server. 
So let's SSH back into the server. At this point, we can either log in through SSH directly or we can log in while also providing our key. But we don't need to use the key just yet. So let's just log in like we did before. Give your password like you would have earlier and then you'll be back into the service. Now we're going to go and modify our SSH config because it's got a few things enabled that we really just don't need enabled on a service. So if we just sudo vi slash etsy slash ssh slash ssh d underscore config and then put in our password. What we need to do is go and search for root. And the first thing we have here is permit root login. So by default, this is enabled because if it wasn't enabled, you just wouldn't be able to log into your server at all. So we're just going to go and disable this. And from this point onwards, we will only be able to log in as a user that is not the root user. And the next thing we're going to do is go and disable password authentication. So password, and it is this one right here. So by default, this is also set to yes. And what this basically means is that as we were logging in before, we could log in just by putting in the password to the server. We're going to go and disable that and make it so you always need to log in with an SSH key. Now, there are some drawbacks in doing this. If you need to log into the server from a computer that does not have an SSH key on this server, you will not be able to log in. So maybe you want to have that disabled, but if you're just going to be logging into this server from a single system, having this set to no is always going to be beneficial. And the last thing we should probably do is go and modify the address family. So this basically says whether we can log in through SSH with IPv4 or IPv6. By default, it's just set to anything, but there's no reason to have them both enabled. So let's just go and set it to INET. And this means that you can only log in through SSH with IPv4 addresses. If you want it to be IPv6 addresses, just set it to INET6 instead. We're done here, so now we can just go and save the file and then go and either reboot the server or restart our SSH daemon. Honestly, it's easier just to reboot the server. So let's just go and reboot that instead. Now, if you disable the password authentication correctly, when you try to SSH into the server, what you're going to see is this permission denied. So what we actually need to do now is also pass in the key that we saved to the server earlier. So in this case, it's going to be Brody server. And when we try to log in like this, now it's actually going to prompt us for our passphrase. So just put in the passphrase for that. And there you go. Now you're back on the server. Now, I already know this is a clean server. We should also go and check what services we have, which are network facing. Because on a server, you only want the things running that you intend to be running. So if we go and run sudo ss-atpu, this is going to list all of those out. So in this case, I just have systemd resolve and sshd and there's nothing out of the ordinary here but if there's something that shouldn't be running make sure you go and stop it running and preferably uninstall it another thing you should definitely consider is setting up a firewall so a safe default with a firewall is block literally everything except for ssh the reason why you don't want to block ssh is so that you can actually connect to the server now it is safe to block ssh if you have physical access to the server but only in that situation Never block the SSH port if you are using a VPS. And from there, what you do is go and open up the ports that you actually need. So let's say that you're running a web server, for example. Then what you'll do is open up port 80 and you'll open up port 443 for HTTP and HTTPS. Or say you're running a game server for Xenotic. You would open up port 25,000 and only have SSH and 25,000 open and leave everything else shut. Now, most Linux distros come with IP tables installed. I'm not going to get into it in this video, but I'd recommend looking up how to block every port except for SSH. There is hundreds of posts on Stack Overflow about it. There's tons of different ways to go and do it, but IP tables could be an entire video by itself. Another thing you may want to consider is a program called Fail to Ban. So what this basically does is if someone tries to log into the server and they fail to log in a certain number of times, it will block their IP address. Now... This can definitely be a beneficial thing to run, but it also has a serious drawback in that if someone knows your IP address, they can spoof your IP address and then try to log into the server and get you blocked out of your own server. So in a lot of situations, it isn't going to be a good idea to run, but it is something you may also want to consider. It does obviously depend on how valuable of a target you are though. So if you're just someone running a random game server, you probably will be fine. I don't know how to segue into the Linode ad, so here you go.
If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or a personal VPN, you know there's going to be one that fits you. Going forward, I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone regardless of your plan size. So right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. So thank you guys for watching. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Montezar, Will, Chikabento, Joseph, Mitchell, Pinity, Tony Tushar, and all of my two dollars supporters. If you'd like to support, I work the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, sell, leave, pay, all of that sort of stuff. If you want to watch my content on a platform that isn't YouTube, you can watch it on like Odyssey, Library, BitChute, all of that sort of stuff. And there'll be links to all that stuff down below as well. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. And I'm out.